The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. Time to get back in the ring. Time to take another swing. The walls were shaking. The earth was quaking. My mind was aching. And you know what? I saw ACDC back in 2016. You don't need to relive that show, although it was super awesome. I'd previously had tickets to see them in high school in September of 1996. That tour got canceled before it got to Hampton. So there I was, 20 years later, with my pregnant wife on Valentine's Day, rocking out to ACDC. Proof again, I have outpunted my coverage. What's that have to do with wrestling? Nothing other than ACDC is a favorite on wrestling playlists worldwide. I'm Jason Bryant, and this is Short Time Shots, a mostly daily look at the scores and more from in and around the sport of wrestling. By the way, if you notice the episode numbers changing, that's because I did an actual audit of the amount of short time episodes in the feed. The most recent show where I interviewed some folks in Little Rock was actually the 580th episode. At some point, I didn't count things and had other non-short time shows in the feed, and that's been fixed, and sure enough, this is the 581st edition of Short Time, whether it be the Short Time Shots form here or my more formal feature story interview angle. I also went to the Richard Nixon School of Accounting. Most of you will not get that joke. Minnesota Beer of the Night, because yes, it's snowing and I am going to have a beverage. It's bite-sized by Modest Brewing. It's classified as a pastry stout, but don't worry, I was sniffing glue in the parking lot before we got here. It's got some evil chattering teeth on the can. It checks in at 6.7%. It's pretty good. Again, for the first major snowfall expected to hit the land of New Brighton by the time you listen to this. Remember, I'm on Untapped at Jason Bryant 12. And by the way, the modest tap room is about a mile and a half from U.S. Bank Stadium. File that away. In dual meets, it was a close one down south in Division II where a fall from Jonathan Miller at 141 pounds was the difference as number 21. Yeah, I'm going to say that. I'm going to keep that in there with the screw-up, with the pause. The number, yeah, 21 Braves of UNC Pembroke, edge number 17 Limestone, 20-19 in Pembroke on Tuesday. All-American Nick Daggett also scored key bonus points for the Braves at 125. Lindsey Wilson, the third-ranked team in NAIA, won 9 out of 10 bouts, including 6 falls as the Blue Raiders trounced Division II Bellarmine 47-3 in Columbia. That's in Kentucky. Returning national champion Brandon Reed picked up his fall at 110 at heavyweight. Grandview, the top-ranked team in the NAI, ran its dual-meet win streak to 80 in a row after blanking Benedictine of Kansas 50 to nothing. During that stretch, Grandview was outscored in opponents by an average of 42.3 to 4.9 and a half. 4.9 and a half, that's ridiculous. 4.95. There's also been 27 shutouts. Oh, the Vikings have won 108 of their last 109 duels, with the last loss coming in November of 2013 to Division I Iowa State. Keeping it in the NAIA, fifth-ranked Campbellsville won a pair of duels at home on Tuesday. First, the Tigers topped the Phoenix of Cumberland University, the one in Tennessee because the one in Kentucky is the University of the Cumberlands. Yeah, anyway, they beat Cumberland University 34-6 before dispatching with West Virginia Tech 59-0. Yes, one point away from a perfect score. Number four, Marion beat Missouri Baptist 43-6. In Division Three, fifth-ranked Augsburg was aided by five forfeits in shutting at St. Olaf 57-0 at Cy Melby Hall in Minneapolis. Guess what? The office of the St. Olaf College president, David the Duck Anderson, has ignored two more media requests for interviews after feeding the boards of regents and the alumni a load of scat, no matter which animal it falls from. Yeah, anyway. You want to get a free month of podcast hosting with Libsyn? I'll tell you how. There are approximately 66 active wrestling podcasts out there with 20 of them here on the Mad Talk Podcast Network. I get asked all the time about what people need to start a podcast. One of the most important things is a podcast hosting company. I firmly believe in quality, and that quality comes at a cost. And with Libsyn, that cost is low. It's also my podcast host of choice. That cost is super affordable. Sign up at Libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N.com. And use the promo code MTO to get your first month of podcast hosting for free when you sign up. That means you get the rest of this month and next month free. They've got plans as affordable as $5 a month. They've been the backbone of this network since its inception. And if you don't reach out to me for technical advice or don't want to be a client or come on the network, at least hear me out on this one. Libsyn.com. Use the promo code MTO and get your free month maybe more. 
Nothing's on the schedule really until after Thanksgiving with action firing up on Saturday with Northern Colorado at Fresno State. On Sunday, we see several notables, including Cornell heading to Ohio State, Wisconsin going to Carver-Hawkeye, Appalachian State facing North Carolina, and Augustana, the one in South Dakota, facing North Dakota State. Also on the schedule, Ohio facing Chattanooga. From the Daily Wrestling News, there's a new number one in the NWCA Division I coaches poll as Iowa moves into the top spot for the first time since February of 2015. Penn State, the previous number one for the last 36 polls, fell to number three after the Nittany Lions saw their 60-match win streak stopped by Arizona State. The Sun Devils slid up. Well, actually, they didn't slide up. They improved six spots to number four, one spot behind the team they just beat. Hey, sports. The other notable saw Nebraska move to number two, tying its best rank in school history. Princeton moved to number 12, its highest ranking in school history. And Army West Point moved to number 21. That is the highest the Black Knights have been ranked since 1994. Kurt Cobain was still alive the last time the Black Knights were this high. Many of you might have been that high the last time the Black Knights were that high as well. But you were probably listening to Kurt Cobain. With two top five victories in a matter of hours, NC State redshirt freshman Trent Hidley was named ACC Wrestler of the Week. Meanwhile, David Carr's win over Caleb Young earned him Big 12 WOW honors. I'm not sure if WOW is going to be said as such other than in SID headlines, but okay. Trent Hilger, a.k.a. Thor, hammered down, dad joke, the Big Ten Wrestler of the Week after pinning Utah Valley's Tate Orndorff in overtime. Speaking of the Big 12, tickets for the Big 12 championships in Tulsa at the BOK Center. That's the Bank of Oklahoma and not the popular vegetable and Asian foods. Yeah, they're on sale, by the way. The Matt.com tells us about the 24 wrestlers who will head to Sweden to compete at the Haparanda Cup this weekend. That list is highlighted by World Teamers Max Nowry, Ryan Mango, Raymond Bunker, and John Stefanowitz. How's the turkey in Sweden? Ah, more dad jokes with international wrestling in Europe. Yeah, anyway. Up in New York, WKBW reports the doctor related to the school system that initially denied the request of a 12-year-old 7th grader to compete on the JV wrestling team saw his association with said system end late last week. Through a statement, Michael Terranova has replied to the situation. However, while citing standards that reportedly weren't applied uniformly, the statement made no mention of his handwritten note that said, quote, girls don't play boy sports in Lancaster schools. Yo, man, double standards. It should be noted that New York does allow 7th and 8th graders to compete in varsity wrestling. Trista Blaze's story has gained national attention. Yeah, you don't want that. More on the girls' wrestling front sees MontanaSports.com reporting that the Montana High School Association will submit a proposal to add girls' wrestling as a sanctioned sport. That vote will come in January. Right now, 18 states sanction or will sanction girls' wrestling in the 2020-21 school year. Notably absent, looking at you, Pennsylvania. Internationally, the Times of India notes world medalist Vinesh Fogat and Olympic medalist Sakshi Malik are the notables set to compete at the Indian National Championships. The news of a possible Russian ban at the upcoming Olympic competitions has officials in the Russian Federation annoyed, to say the least. Russian Federation head Mikhail Mamishvili spoke out against the potential ban in his international news services, citing instances in the past where athletes were punished unjustly for the, quote, sins of their fathers. Yeah, okay then. In keeping it international, the president of Iran's National Olympic Committee responded to United World Wrestling's postponement of the Greco-Roman World Cup. UWW had issued a statement on Sunday saying the postponement was in response to current instability in Iran. Tuesday, the Murr News Agency noted that Reza Salehi, the aforementioned president of Iran's National Olympic Committee, said UWW's decision was hasty, sensational, and under the influence of incorrect propaganda by Western states against Iran. Back stateside, Cody Goodwin of the Des Moines Register opens up the wrestling mailbag in the wake of the Iowa-Iowa State duel, which drew over 11,000 fans at Hilton Coliseum. And we end the daily wrestling news as sad news came in late Monday as it was learned that Brian Keck, a former NJCA national champion and longtime wrestler on the senior level, had died. The details around the situation are still slim, but Keck was one of a kind. If you didn't know him, he looked mean and intimidating. If you wrestled him, you'd probably understand that to be also true. But Brian was a jovial, big-hearted guy with a very unique past, and one where wrestling played a big role in changing the course of what he'd do with his life. He dabbled in professional wrestling, coached MMA fighters, ran youth tournaments, and was generally someone who just liked to do right by people. Personally, Keck has been a friend of mine since 2005. We roomed together in Fargo. I announced tournaments for him. Most recently, the preseason nationals last month. 
He was a funny guy who everybody kind of joked calling him No Neck Keck, hoping he wouldn't actually snap yours in half. He was one of those people that had a story. And when I say that, everyone who knew him had a story that involved him in some way, shape, or form. I've got uh, probably a dozen, at least. Last month in Des Moines, he bought a bunch of tickets to the Carrie Underwood concert next door from where the venue where the preseason nationals were held. That's at the Wells Fargo Arena. You know, we were in the old barn, the Hy-Vee Hall. Carrie Underwood's performing next door. He wasn't comp those tickets. He bought them for his workers, his volunteers, and others. I tell you what, the ticket I had wasn't cheap. He spent a lot of money out of his own pocket to make sure his people found a good time. Guess what? We did. I love the show, and I'm not even really familiar with Carrie Underwood's music. I I mean, I hear it now, and I'm like, oh, that's the song I heard at the concert. He was a ball buster with a big heart. Brian Keck was a -a one-of-a-kind person, and our sport of wrestling was blessed to have him. I don't know if more information will become available, because I'm still stunned and shocked to hear of his passing. He was supposed to be running the Turkey Nationals in Des Moines this weekend. That should be the least of our worries. His impact was broad. I received texts from people like Nick Simmons, Ben Asker, and Jerry Briscoe, and Brandon Slay, all looking for information, and all of them speaking about how good of a guy he was. Even though Brian's gone, I can tell you this. I'm super thankful, as we're approaching Thanksgiving, that I got the chance to know Brian Keck and call him a friend. We'll miss you, buddy. We all will. On the network... This week's On the Mat with Kyle Klingman and Andy Hamilton talks with Arizona State assistant coach Chris Pendleton, a two-time NCAA champion at Oklahoma State. You can probably figure out why there. On Monday, Short Time Wrestling Podcast, my traditional version, I talked with Little Rock AD George Lee, head coach Neil Ayersman, and wrestling backer Greg Hatcher. I was down there announcing Little Rock's first home duel, and I got some immediate reactions there. You can read all those stories and more from the Mat Talk Online Daily Wrestling Newsletter. Sign up for free at mattalkonline.com slash news and get today's top wrestling stories from around the world delivered to your inbox for free every single morning. The Daily Newsletter is sponsored by Resolite. In case you're wondering, that octagonal mat in Little Rock was an octagonal zip mat from Resolite. If you'd like to support the show and all the on-demand audio offerings, free newsletters, and historical research, you can support this program and the network by making a small monthly contribution or one-time donation by going to mattalkonline.com slash join the team. Venmo, PayPal, and Buy Me a Coffee are preferred. Actually, they're not preferred. Those are options. What's preferred is Patreon because you get a perk with your monthly Patreon contribution. You get branded shirts, glasses, hats, digital preview guides, shout outs on the show, and even a chance to be on the show. The Short Time Wrestling Podcast is proudly outfitted by Compound Sportswear. I'd like to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving, or if you're up in Canada, happy Thursday. I'd like to thank you for spending your time with me because you've always got time for Short Time.